Baby Pokemon. They're cute, and there's only a handful of them in the games. 19 of them to be exact. One of which is many trainers' favorite. I mean, who doesn't like this guy? So I decided to try to beat Pokemon Sword with only Pokemon that evolve from babies. Now, I was just going to do babies only, but honestly, babies plus Raihan's double battle kind of scares me. So I just went with their Evos, which should make for a pretty interesting team. I'll be doing this under Hardcore Nuzlocke rules as most of my videos, and if you guys do enjoy it, make sure to subscribe because 80% of you aren't, and all of us that are subscribed can't seem to understand why. Well anyways, I hope you are having a wonderful day, and let's get started. You know, I know it's a game and we rarely ever change our clothes in these games, but I can't imagine being Leon and wearing this every second of every day. The cape itself looks itchy. I'm picking Scorbunny this time for all of you who love this little guy, and I just want to make it clear that I don't hate Scorbunny or Raboot, I just don't like how Raboot turns into this. That is all. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. If you're looking for an amazing mobile game, look no further as Raid has a bunch of content just waiting for you to enjoy. There's over 600 champions to choose from which can be used to defeat a ton of different bosses, all of which require different strategies to beat. The champions come from unique factions, one of which is the High Elves. Just like their name states, they are pretty high and rich, but they weren't always like that. You see, they've been around for thousands of years. They helped humans and defeated orcs, but everything changed when some Dark Kai came along and made them Dark Elves. A whole civil war broke out and nearly ended the elves, but they rebuilt and now things couldn't be better for them, being the richest of them all. We love a good comeback story here on the channel. Honestly, this is one of my favorite high elves. Look how sick this guy looks. Virgus is about to decapitate somebody with that spear. And this month, Raid has a whole bunch of events scheduled, including the Forge Pass Season 3, which offers dope rewards, including a limited edition artifact set. If that wasn't enough, they're also bringing new champions, plus skins for the incredible Madame Ceres. You thought that was it? Nope. Later this month, Raid is giving everybody's favorite champion a big upgrade. Death Knight will become a legendary champion, and I can't wait to see what he has in store for us. Ultimate Death Knight, coming August 2022. This is the best time to get started in Raid, and if you click my link in the description or scan the QR code on the top left of the screen, you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Rector Drath, 200,000 silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one Ancient Shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get into the game. All this treasure and more will be waiting for you here, and you better do it fast, because those rewards are only available for the next 30 days, and only for new players. Go scan that QR code or click the link in the description, and I will see you there. Big shout out to Raid, and let's get back to the video. Alright, so a good chunk of babies can be found right now in the wild area. Our first one is Tyrogue in the Dappled Grove. I named him Diaper. Now it is a nickname theme, but I mean, it's pretty straightforward this time around. Over in Westlake Axwell, I came across as Badoo and I named him Pacifier. This thing actually has a modest nature, which is great. You know, these guys kind of look like oversized toddlers. They can't even get shirts that fit them. Anyways, now that I've triggered the Isle of Armor DLC by going to Motostoke, we can finish the rest of the encounters. I do have to fight Clara before it continuing, so I had to go Watt farming for the TR Earthquake. Now in order to defeat Clara, I need this TR, Plus, I need to go poison myself with either an Oddish or a Badoo in the wild area, since Diaper's ability is Guts. This took a really long time to do, as Oddish gets Poison Powder at level 14, and I wasn't finding any level 14s, and Badoo is kind of a rare find. Once we do it though, Clara starts off with a Venipede. I go ahead and use Fake Out for a good chunk, and then an Earthquake can finish it off. Slowpoke is fairly tanky, so it does only take a third from it, but luckily she only used Acid. Another one and she's not quite in the red. She finally used a Confusion, which surprisingly didn't kill Diaper, or maybe not since I am quite higher of a level, and a third Earthquake can finish that scary fight. From here we can go look for a Hapini in the Fields of Honor, and an Azuro in Brawler's Cave. I named Hapini Huggies, and it has a naive nature, while Azuro was named Pampers and has a neutral nature. Luckily it had huge power as well. You know, this Onyx could literally eat my babies in one single bite. I should be careful. Now for our first fight with Hop, I didn't evolve anything by friendship since at this point I still wanted to do a baby only run, so instead I led Azuro to charm Wulu's attack down, and then went to Pacifier to get a stun spore off. After, I got a sweet kiss off with Huggies, but it was useless as Wulu never hit himself. Next, Tyro can come out and he was already burned from a flame orb that was found in the Isle of Armor. It did take a bit to get the plus 4 attack as Wulu has Growl, but after popping an Ornberry, we can take out Wulu with an Earthquake. Rookity's Peck does nothing, and a Tackle can kill that, and Grookey actually doesn't die to an Earthquake since it is resisted. However, his Branch Poke didn't do much, so I just stayed in and finished him off. Thankfully, we didn't get crit. You just got defeated by a team of babies. How's it feel, bud? 
After this fight, I evolved Huggies into Chansey, Pacifier into Roselia, and Pampers into Meryl, which at level 18 also fully evolves into Azumarill, which makes this Pokemon so good for early game with huge power. I mean, just look at this bead fight. Die, die, die. Chansey, no, you're better as a Chansey. Now for Diaper's evolution, I gave him a couple of defense EVs so that our attack would be equal to our defense at level 20, so I can use Hitmontop since I never get to use one. Guts is good because it turns into Intimidate for Hitmontop. So for Milo, he probably thinks I'm a Psycho since I just let a Water type against his Grass types. I just Dynamaxed and Max Airstreamed his Pokemon to death within 3 turns of the battle. Sorry buddy, but they should have given you 3 Grass types considering how many Pokemon you get in the wild area. Maybe even 4. No Huggies. Our next baby is actually a gift in the daycare, that being Toxel. This is my favorite baby ever introduced so far, as it puts in a lot of work in the tournament. And it's just really cool. You'll know this if you watched my poison run months back in Pokemon Sword. I named her Stroller and she has a rash nature. Honestly, I took care of Hop the same way I took care of Milo. Well, almost, if his Corvus Squire didn't hang on by a thread. Well, at least we can get Stroller in here for some action. Whoa, why am I just noticing that there's Toxtricity statues here? Bro, that is so hard to say and I don't think I'm ever gonna get it right. Tox-tricity. Tox-tricity. Tox of the tricity. These guys sure are popular with their guitar playing skills. Nessa was our next gym fight and I led Pacifier. One Magical Leaf can straight up take out Goldeen and her Aerocuda comes out. In order to KO, we have to D-Max, so we do that and we decimate that thing. Now, Dreadnought would probably live if it was just water type, but since it is rock type, that quad effective overgrowth puts him straight into the ground. So sorry, Nessa. Beads, stop trying. Seriously, Beads' team didn't stand a chance to this team the entire run. Honestly, the same goes for Marnie. Oh, would you stop trying to evolve? Now came our hardest fight so far. Well, sort of. Really, it was just more steps. See, I led Diaper to take care of Ninetales. I hit it with an EQ and got him down pretty low. I didn't kill right away though, as I wanted to be burned, and I'll explain why in a bit. It did take a while for her to burn us a second time. I had a Lumberry on Diaper on accident, that's why I say second time. Eventually, he did burn us with Ember instead of Will-O-Wisp, thank god, because I feared that he wasn't going to use Will-O-Wisp again. Anyways, after we can knock him out from where he's at and Arcanine comes out. Now the reason I can't just lead Pampers is because both Ninetales and Arcanine are faster than him, and they both have Will-O-Wisp which will destroy my chance to kill Scorch. The reason I wanted Diaper burned is so the AI doesn't ever go for Will-O-Wisp on my switch in and instead goes for a flame wheel. Now we can Dynamax, he outspeeds and willows us, which we do have a Lumberry for, and a single Max Geyser can get rid of that Arcanine. This will also set up the rain. Now with rain up, Sentiscorch is sent to Ferno does nothing, and since this thing has sent to Ferno and not Max Flare, it doesn't set up sun, so a rain boosted Max Geyser can demolish the firebug to the ground. I think you need some serious burn heal, Kabu. I'll call up Blaine right now. You guys are quite pathetic, don't you think? Now with all those pathetic gym leaders beaten, we can unlock sandstorms and snowstorms. This means we can find Riolu who I named Powder and she has a serious nature, and I also went to go get a Mime Junior in a snowstorm and named her Cradle. From there, a Munchlax was next, and man is this a cute baby. I named him Formula. I did catch a Bonsly named Bottle, but I actually never ended up using her. Now I did have some footage lost between Hammerlock all the way down to the bead fight. Thankfully nothing really happened. The Gym Leader B was super easy, allowing me to set up on her fighting types with Lucario. She got swept, and nothing happened before that either. Hop was a complete cakewalk. And of course, Bead here is just useless. I like how we blame him for destroying this wall, but he literally discovered this ancient statue behind it, and we decide to tell no one about it, ever. It's like, oh, remember that Bead guy we, we endorsed? Up next is Opal in Baloney Town, or whatever the hell it's called. This fight is pretty much always given to you if you just answer her questions right and get the boosts. Basically, I got to plus 6 special attack as I did want a special Lucario, and once she gets us to the yellow, we pop a Citrus Berry. Most of the moves I have are from TRs, if you're wondering, since I usually never play with them. Now I did accidentally click Aura Sphere, which she lives, but we're still alive, so another one and it kills. Togekiss gets destroyed by a flash cannon, Mawile dies to an Aura Sphere, and I don't even have to Dynamax with Powder here, because that's just how strong she is. Yes, pretty boy, go with the old lady. But you should leave me that coat before you go, it's actually kinda nice. Hop challenges us again to a battle, and I love the scenery of this fight. I set up a nasty plot against his Trevenant, and he didn't crit with a Shadow Claw. One flash cannon takes that out, Heatmore dies to an Aura Sphere, Boltoon does a chunk to us, but it dies as well. Clearly Snorlax is in no shape to take Lucario on, and Rillaboom does live a hit so I do have to switch. I was hoping Stroller could pick up the KO, but after taking a drum beating on entry and knockoff doing a lot since I had an item, 
I had to switch after our Venoshock just missed the KO. Unfortunately, I forgot Hop has Potion, so I could have went for another Venoshock, but instead I switched into Mr. Thick here and went for a Crunch instead of Body Slam? God knows why. But yeah, after one more, I had to switch again. Diaper was the one to finish this fight up. That Rillaboom sure did put up a fight. Right after this, Pacifier evolved into a Roserade from a Shiny Stone I found on Route 8. I don't know why, but I always thought Roserade was a physical attacker, but it actually has a base 125 special attack. It must have been because I know it learned Swords Dance. Now I wish I could say Gordy was tough, but aside from the skin on his rock types being that, yeah, he's pretty soft. Either that or Powder is just that much of a beast. Powder could easily take out Barbarical with an Aura Sphere, and I can't set up on it since it has Rock Tomb, which lowers speed. From there, the easiest Pokemon to ever exist comes out, and yeah, base 20 in defenses isn't going to save Stonjourner from anything. I wouldn't doubt if Powder turns Stonjourner into Powder here. Now when Shuckle comes out, I do set up to plus 6 special attack and Shuckle dies to an Aura Sphere. Again, just like Opal, we do not need to Dynamax to put his rocks in the ER. I bet the crowd is going wild right now. Oh my god, he just killed the almighty Rock Tamer without Dynamaxing! Well yeah, I mean, Rock types are pretty bad kid. I mean, what did you expect? I have a Lucario. Speaking of almighty trainers, no, I'm just playing. Hop is super easy to set up on as well. Goodbye, 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 and you guessed it, goodbye. He's probably so confused on what he's doing wrong. Nothing, bro. Uh, the animal I have here, I, I think it's, uh, I think it has rabies. It's just Lucario is that powder full. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll let myself out. You know, oddly enough, that gym is a virgin exclusive gym, which is weird since in Surchester it's snowing, so ice types make more sense. A couple of moments after, we had gotten Cradle to evolve into a Mr. Rhyme, and this Pokemon also puts in a lot of work. You know, I think I'm just realizing that this city is literally inside of something, and there's probably a roof. That's actually so sick. Although I guess the downside of this is I keep getting jumped around every corner. Fine, take my Poke Dollars, just don't hurt me. What man? Chill, we just wanted to know about your car's extended warranty. I don't even have a vehicle yet, guys. What? Can you guys hit me back up when I go to the Paldea region? Pierce's Scrafty is usually annoying with Sand Attack, but Aura Sphere never misses, which makes Powder even more crazy for Sword and Shield. It's just another gym he can take care of by himself. Now, I did get a Nasty Plot up, but it straight went for a Brick Break and popped our Citrus Berry. Thankfully, it didn't crit, but honestly, I figured it would use Sand Attack like it always does. Anyway, Scrafty eats dirt and Obstagoon comes out. Now, every time I've played, I feel like it goes for Obstruct turn one, so I try to predict that in Nasty Plot. He in fact does Obstruct, and now an Aura Sphere kills you and Malamar as well. I actually forgot Skunting had Sucker Punch, which did some chip, and an Aura Sphere KO'd it in one hit, and man was I scared because of Aftermath. But then I was like, wait, it's not gonna activate since the battle is over. Yep, Powder is still standing. Leon, what the hell are you doing? Alright, Raihan is always scary, but for once, I had a really good plan. I EV trained both Cradle and Pacifier in special attack EVs and led them in the front of the party. I love Roserade because of this fight right here. So Cradle is holding a Choice Scarf to outspeed Flygon and kill it with Freeze Dry. Roserade at max special attack kills Gigalith with a Petal Dance in one hit since it's not sturdy, and that's also with the special defense boost from the Sandstorm. Ladies and gents, that is a turn one wipe for them, and they didn't even get a chance to do anything. All that's left is Duraludon and Sand. Anaconda. I don't want to lose Cradle since he's very useful in the tournament, so I brought Chansey to sack. Now, Petal Dance does have a mind of its own when choosing who to hit, so this time it hits Duraludon, which isn't bad for some chip, but I was hoping for Sanaconda as it does one shot. From there, Duraludon throws a huge rock wall at Chansey, and now we'll never be bothered by that thing trying to evolve again. Sanaconda does glare us, which sucks since I had a Lumberry for the confusion on Petal Dance, but luckily we didn't get confused until the turn after this one. I do send in Powder with a Choice Specs, and now Pacifier does target the right slot, which can destroy Sanaconda with a single Petal Dance, which is huge, and an Aura Sphere can finish this fight just like that. Oh come on, Raihan, you know you got your butt whooped. Admit it! So our first semi-finalist is Marnie, and she hasn't been in trouble all game, but this time she's annoying with Torment. So I led Formula, who can yawn as she uses Nasty Plot. From there, I swapped into Powder as she does go for that Torment. As she falls asleep, I go for a Nasty Plot and immediately Flash Cannon this kitty to its 8th life. I use Flash Cannon because Scrafty comes out right after, and we need to use Aura Sphere to one-shot. Now since I am subjected to Torment, I can't use Aura Sphere again on Morpeko, so I do try to Flash Cannon, but she lives on 1, and since she's going to heal, an Aura Sphere kills it from full. For Toxicroak, I misclicked on Nasty Plot, and she used Swagger, so now I had to switch into Cradle because this thing doesn't have a fighting type move. It only has Venoshock and Sucker Punch, meaning we're in completely for free. Now fearing that Sucker Punch, we can Encore it into it, and then we can go back into Powder for free. Set up a Nasty Plot, and a single Flash Cannon can destroy this thing. 
Now when Grim's Gnarl comes out, I go ahead and Dynamax Powder for the first time in a while as she does hers. Since we're not tormented anymore, a Max Steel Spike obliterates her and that's our first fight of the tournament down. Hop is up next and man, I don't know what to tell you, but Powder is literally the key if you want to take down Hop easily. His double can't do anything here, so I can set it for free and yeah, his entire team gets sent to the next dimension by Aura Sphere. Stick to beating your drums, Rillaboom. Dude, what are you doing? Jules, Jules, how does it feel to absolutely destroy Hop? time and time again. Now that's enough. Jules won't be answering any more questions. Hot man, I mean, were they lying? <laughs> All right, so for Olina, we actually won't be using powder. This time I led formula with a Lumberry for the Will-O-Wisp. The first time I missed a big rock slide as she double teamed. The following turn though, she burned us and we hit one doing loads of damage. One more is enough to KO and out comes my Lotic. Now I can yawn my Lotic and switch into Cradle as she safeguards. From there, Olina's my Lotic is asleep and we Nasty Plot and Baton Pass into Stroller who has Choice Specs. Stroller at plus two with a Choice Specs and a Boom Burst with the Punk Rock ability which boosts sound base moves absolutely destroys my Lotic's eardrums. I don't know how we all aren't dead right now, or at least bleeding from our ears, but whatever. Salazzle does get off a mean Incinerate, but that is down and Serena as well. It's funny how not Dynamaxing here does more damage to Garboarder than Dynamaxing does, but that's just how the stroller rolls. I wasn't going to mention the bead fight, but I underestimated how fast a Rapidash is, and Powder nearly died to Psycho Cut. Thankfully, it didn't crit, but yeah, his whole team got Flash Cannon. No surprise there. All we have left are five battles. And fortunately, not all of them require Powder. Our first battle, I led Cradle. This way, I can protect to see if he would use First Impression, but instead he uses Shadow Claw for some reason. The idea is to encore her into Sword Stance and Baton Pass a Nasty Plot. I know I can live a crit Shadow Claw, so I go for a Nasty Plot and she actually uses Sword Stance, which is huge, since now I can encore her into it. Now I can just Baton Pass into Stroller with a Choice Scarf. One single Overdrive can electrocute Galissapod and immediately after, Barrascuta comes out. Barrascuta is insanely fast, but with that Choice Scarf, we can outspeed and one-shot that, Seeking, Pelipper, and we don't even need to Dynamax for her Dreadnought. It's always so funny how our tiny Pokemon are just taking down these giants. It's even funnier that they're actually babies. Next up is B, and she starts off with a Halucha. Now I decided to risk a crit high jump kick and she didn't get it, meaning we pop a berry and a Psychic can take that out. Halucha is no joke. I knew this would force her into Surf Edge as it does have Throat Chop, which is a dark type move. I come in on that with Stroller and we don't even need to set up. A simple Choice Specs Boom Burst can take Surf Edge, Grap Lock, Phalanx, and believe it or not, this was right on the money to kill Machamp. Now for Raihan's fight, I led Pampers after a long time on the bench. This Torkoal does have Drought, so I wanted to get Rain up. He does go for a Solar Beam, which means we have the Rain up for free, and then we can get a Light Screen up, and that Solar Beam does nothing. One Liquidation can murder this Tortoise, and Gudra comes out. Gudra comes out because it has Thunder, and this is great because now I can go into Cradle, who can Nasty Plot, take a Surf, and Baton Pass into... Toxtricity. The rain also runs out at the perfect time so that the AI more than likely goes ahead and clicks rain dance, which it does, meaning we're in for free. Now at plus two, a boom burst takes out the super specially defensive Gudra. For Flygon, I thought I would outspeed with the EVs, but thankfully it went for a sandstorm and he gets mopped. We burst Turtonator's non-existent ears out, and yeah, we don't need a Dynamax. This straight up kills the Skyscraper. So you're telling me you're just standing here while we have to stop a madman up there? Some gym leader you are. I don't get paid enough to do this kid. So for Rose, I top powder blaze kick and put a wide lens on her so she doesn't miss. Scavalier and Ferrothone both burn to a crisp, but Kling Kling does live one so it wild charges me, but right after burns as well. Now for Berserker, I needed a Swords Dance, but I calced his Shadow Claw wrong, and that did way more damage than I expected. Luckily, we didn't die, and we have to Dynamax. Once that cat is burnt to a crisp, the sun is set up, which is needed to destroy his Copper Aja in one hit. Even with one of the best types in the game, you can't win, Rose. Uh, to be fair though, Lucario is part steel type. Now having saved the world and beaten every single thing in my path, we can walk out into the pitch and look at all these fans cheering for me. Well, let's give him a show, Leon. Oh, he finally took off the cape. So I led Cradle and I think you can guess where this is going. His AG Slash can do two things here, King Shield or Shadow Ball. The ideal one is King Shield to Encore it, obviously. Regardless though, I do protect to see what it's going to do, and he did King Shield, meaning the following turn we can Encore. Then we just Nasty Plot, and for some reason, I protected again and Encored, but that just wasn't needed. Anyways, we Baton Pass into Powder, who can Shadow Ball this Sword and Shield to the Shadow Realm. Haxorus catched a big Aura Sphere, Dragapult will outspeed for that Flamethrower, leaving us super weak, but yeah, a Shadow Ball for him as well. Inteleon comes out next and we probably outsped by a couple of points and that is taken care of. So is Mr. Rhyme. 
and finally his mighty Charizard is out. Now even though it's physical, a max Rockfall can trample this Charizard 6 feet under and win us the championship. Come on Leon. I had to save the region and you couldn't even win this fight as redemption. Alright, the whole Mr. Rhyme baton passing was amazing throughout this run. I love how it works so well with Stroller and Powder. Babies actually turn into some really powerful Pokemon. You know, despite them being babies at first. But this group of teenagers did so well and I loved every second of it. If you guys did enjoy, leave a like and comment for the algorithm. You guys are amazing and I will see you all next time. Bye!